Hi and welcome back. Um, in this part we're going to use the uh, distance decay values that we sort of produced both by regression and mathematics and calculate the uh, accessibility to jobs from any location I, which is municipalities in these cases. We have constructed three different <coughs> kinds of um, sort of decay values. One is an exponential function, or what I call exponential function m, which is the mathematically derived value that ended up to be this big. And we had the regressed function that ended up to be this one. And we had the f power function had this, which we are going to call for the gamma value. So these are going to replace the betas, the betas, and the gammas in the functions to find out the, um, the probability of, of accepting an opportunity at, at the dis distance between i and j in, in each of these cases. So how to express it? Well, these formulations, as we can see, also keep the, the key to them all. So we start with an equal sign, and the opportunity in this case is the number of jobs. So the number of jobs is the opportunity. So jobs at any location j, and then times, as we can see in, the, uh, in, in this one, we've got the exponential function of the distance times the negative beta. So I'm going to go for exp, and I'm going to take the distance, which is expressed there in meters times um, the, and in this case I have to enter a negative value because uh, sometimes when, when I do the mathematics they, they come, as you can see here. We don't need double negations because that would have a very sort of odd effect in all these kinds of math. So I need just negative and uh, a positive value value afterwards. So I'm going to go for the, for the sorry, the mathematical one is, yes, this one. And I'm going to close the parentheses. And in order to make this work, I also have to enter a few dollar signs. And the reason is, of course, that we, if we want a function to work also in cells 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and stuff like that, we want to make it an easy way and I want to be able to double click and make the function work. And then I have to lock the cell references. And I'm doing that by entering a dollar sign uh, between these two, but I don't want to lock in the distance because the distance should move, of course. So this is the formulation. So the number of jobs times the exponential, the uh, times the function of, of um, cost over distance. Uh, and this is the number of jobs I get. So rather than having 12,000 jobs, I'm down to 10,000 jobs. But it's not surprising given that we are dealing with the same municipality. So the majority of jobs are still there. But if I do a click like that, it computes the sum of jobs for all these locations. As you could see, as I move down here, we've got, let me see, we've got the number of jobs in column E. In fact, we got 7,298 jobs, but only 0.08 are deemed as valid. And that's got to do with the fact that they are too far away. So from a distance decay point of view, they are not likely to be accepted, any of them, uh, given the fact that we've given very sort of strict uh, ways of looking at, the, at, at accessibility and computations and stuff. So this is by this double click was conducted for all these cases. In this case, 290 times 290, which is 84,100 uh, specific units. So it's, it's a lot of computations going on. Now we move to the same kind of regression. We can in fact do this, we copy it and I go in and the only thing I need to replace is in fact this value. So I move this one. So I have from the regressed beta value, I'm going to have a little bit more jobs and also more jobs from all the other locations. As you can see, this version that we've regressed is less sensitive to distance. It's got another di distance decay value. And finally, we move to the power function. And the power function has got kind of a different set of, of designs. We have to write it from the beginning. We've got the opportunities, which of course are the jobs times uh, the log of distance. So I'll take the logarithm of the distance. There I go. And I made sure that I've got no zeros and ones and stuff like that. So I'm ending up with that, with, with factual distances that are sort of reasonable. If you get zero, <coughs> you cannot calculate a log value, of course, because that violates the math behind it. So you can't have, you can't have log zero. So I've got the log of the distance to the power of the negative gamma value that we found in an earlier version to be 1.315. And as in the previous ones, I have to lock in these values 
and I do so subsequently and this as you can see restricts the number as you're tremendously um, as you can see for the same municipality given one way of seeing it they've got 10,000 jobs available the other one is giving us 12,000 jobs the third one is giving us 956 jobs which might be a little bit on the low side but then again, there's very little to be able for us to say this is wrong and this is bad and this is good because all comes down to our assumptions on how the labor market functions. And some of these functions are modeled to be good for, again, migration rather than commuting and so many different things. So what works here might not work in the other setting or the in, in another sort of distance framework. So it, it is more or less good in this framework, but perhaps less so in another model. But we got at least three, three of these. But this is just the amount of jobs available from Origin 114 in Work Municipality 114. So we haven't summed it up. We need to understand what happens in all of the 114 numbered municipalities. In this case, this is just the code of one of the municipalities. Um, so we need to sum them up. And I'm going to do that with a sort of, since we're in Excel, I'm going to use it using a sum if function. So I'm writing equal and sum if, and to make it simple for me, I double click it, I can see what I need to do. I need to have the range, and the first of the range is to the, where I've got the origin value specified. And the easiest thing I can do is just click the, uh, the entire column A, and I do a semicolon and then they ask myself what's the criteria and the criteria is I've already sort of created a list of the municipality codes. I click on one of these values and I do a new semicolon and they are asking me for the sum range. And I'll start with the first one being this one. And then I close the parentheses and it solves it for me in this way that I can do it and showing that for the first municipalities I got 14,000 no, sorry, 141,000 jobs available to the individuals. It's far more than there are individuals, but we have to understand that this is a potential job accessibility. So from that location, given that you've got no restrictions whatsoever, you can take any job you like, and distance is the only threshold. These are the numbers of jobs that uh, affects your uh, sort of possibility of getting it. The interesting thing is, if we now want to, this is the one being expressed mathematically, we can in fact go in and change the values altogether. I'm just going to copy that value and I'm going to express uh, or change it to, let me see, I'm going to do changes to a two word. Now, keep close attention in these ones and see what happens to the summary values because when I do that, all these values changes because the prerequisites for sort of distance, the, the, the decay parameters are changing. So in fact, also the decay is changed. So this is kind of how it, it works together. Now I return to the old values. With the same kind of function, I'll, I'll do this. I copy and I go to the next one and I make sure to uh, move to, let me see, this one instead. And I go for the finally, if you bear with me. I'll move to the final one and I'll make sure to see that using these kinds of conditions we see that these distributions work like they do. And if I just take a few of these and see if we can make a list of the Stockholm County ones, the ones starting with the 100, these are those municipalities. We could see, and now I'm sorry, I've created a very odd value of, of one of these things. Let me see if I can um, make it like this instead. There's an interesting set of things going on here uh, because as we could see we want, we've want we got the one mathematically expressed which is in this case relatively similar to the to the power function which is the green one here but the, but the power function doesn't change almost at all because it's sort of not very sensitive to longer distances. We also saw that in this one where if I go to the decay tab and move to the to the graph I had in the end, that as as long as we end up with some kind of a distance, it's just going to go on and on and on and on and being very similar in all its values. Um, so, uh, and and the regressed value seems to be looking a little bit like the other ones, but on a on a much much higher level. Again, which one is correct, which is not, is a completely different matter.